Hi, I'm Dr. Pratik Chowdhury and in this video I'm going to be giving you a little bit of information about how to understand and use the arrows that you see on your Freestyle Libre device. I'm a senior lecturer and consultant in diabetes at King's College Hospital in London. So we've termed this video Advanced Libre Use and I think people would probably want to come to this once they've got the experience of using the Libre um, for a few weeks. The learning objectives from this video are to understand what those arrows mean and give you some ideas on how you might use those arrows to make some decisions or to change the decisions you, you normally make and how to use these data with Bolus Advisor apps and we'll talk briefly about that as well. So when you first start using a Freestyle Libre device um, you get a lot of arrows and this extra information for some people can feel a bit overwhelming. We feel there's a need to understand when you see that arrow how quickly your blood glucose is actually changing. To avoid overreacting to that glucose, we've certainly seen some patients um, when they start using the Libre overreacting causing their blood sugars to get worse. And if you can understand how fast your glucose is going to change based on the arrow, that might help you make a plan and be strategic about when you should look at the data to make some really useful decisions. So this table gives you a bit of an idea um, about what the arrows mean and I'll go through this uh, slowly. So the first um, arrow that you might have is one that goes straight up and in technical terms this means the rate of change of glucose is more than 0.11 millimoles per minute. On the whole that means that you're going to go up by one millimole on average in about seven minutes. It can be between five to eight, five to ten minutes, but the average is about seven minutes. I think an interesting way to think about or a useful way to think about how to use that information is how far you will go in 30 minutes. And if you've got a straight up arrow, you're going to go up by at least three and on average by about five millimoles per litre. If you've got the oblique arrow, that means the glucose is changing by between 0.11 and 0.06 millimoles per litre. So it's going to take you an average of about 15 minutes to change by one millimole. And if you think again, where are you going to be in about 30 minutes? You're going to be about two or three millimoles higher than where you are now. If the arrow is flat, it means the rate of change is less than 0.06 millimoles per litre. It doesn't mean that you're not changing, it just means that you're changing very little. And so you may change by one millimole over about 20 minutes or so. And in the next half hour, you're unlikely to be more than two millimoles away from where you are. So now, if you've got a flat arrow, that means the blood glucose is changing at less than 0.06 millimoles per minute. So that means that over the next 20 minutes, you may actually change by about one millimole per litre. Um, in the next 30 minutes, but the change is going to be less than two. So it doesn't mean that your glucose is absolutely stable. There is a little bit of change, but it's going to be relatively stable over the next half hour. Now, if you've got the oblique downward arrow, again, it means the same, that the glucose is changing by between 0.1 and 0.06 millimoles per minute. So you're going to go down by one over about 15 minutes. It could be between 10 to, 10 to 18. Um, and you're going to go in half an hour, you're going to be between two and three millimoles lower than where you are now. And so you can use that information to work out if your blood glucose was say seven and falling, when you should rescan again. And if you've got the arrow going straight down, of course that means you're falling rapidly and you're falling by more than 0.11 millimoles per minute. So it's going to take you on average about seven minutes, but certainly short, maybe down as less as five minutes to fall by one. And in the next half hour, you're going to drop by at least three and on average about five to six millimoles per litre. And so if, if you look at Libre data, of course, um, in the past when you're doing your finger pricks, most of those readings were pre-meal. And with the Libre, most of the information it gives you is after meal. And so you can start thinking about how to use that data to make proper decisions. Because a blood glucose of 12 Give, will lead to a different action if that's before a meal, maybe a different action if it's one hour after a meal, if it's two hours after a meal, or three hours after a meal. And that's what I'm going to try and discuss a little bit later, as this glucose kind of has this bump of rising rapidly after a meal, then slowing down, maybe flattening out, and then dropping down the other side. And it's about understanding what those arrows and blood sugars mean at different times post-meal.
When you've got the Libre, one of the challenges people have is expecting their blood glucose is going to be flat all the time. And I think it's really important to have realistic expectations about what you're going to see, um, particularly post-meal. Because even after you've made the, you know, you weighed your carbs, your carb ratio is correct, your correction dose is correct, your basal is correct, there's still a large chance that your blood glucose is going to be off target or not quite where you'd like it to be. When we look back at patients who've got, you know, an HbA1c of 7% or 53 millimoles per mole, on average, they have about 60 or 65% of their Libre readings between 4 and 10 millimoles per litre. So even those people who are at target, if you like, have got about 30% of their readings that are high, above 10, and maybe 5 to 8% that are below 4. And one of the analogies or things that we use to explain this to people is every time you take a bolus or a shot of quick-acting insulin, imagine you're teeing off on a golf course. So you're going to collect, correct, uh, calculate the dose, work out what the right dose is to, to take, but even the best players, or even if everything is right, sometimes you're going to overhit and, and have a hypo, or sometimes you're going to not take as much and your blood sugar is going to remain high. And I'll, I'll talk you through that a little bit later. If you can get between 60 to 65% of your readings between 4 to 10, we think you're doing a fantastic job. So just to explain that golfing analogy, analogy a little bit better, as you say, if you've calculated your dose and you've you know, you've taken the insulin, the blood sugar is going to go up a bit and it's going to come down. If you can land it near that flag, let's say your target is a blood sugar of six, that's like a hole in one. And even if you're a, a fantastic golf player, there's an element of luck involved with that. If you can land the blood sugar between four and 10, at least 60% of the time, that means your settings are probably in the right ballpark. That means you're doing really good. You're really good at carb counting and your carb ratio and basal settings are probably very close to where they need to be. Even then though, sometimes you're going to take the right dose of insulin and it's going to end up in a hypo. You, is that, for that moment in time, on that day, it's going to be a little bit too much. And of course, when you treat the hypo, blood sugar is going to up and down, it's going to be a bit messy for a while after. And that might happen, we think, even you know, if you do everything you can, up to 5% of the time. About 30% of the time, even people who have really fantastic control might underhit. So you've taken the right dose, you think you've calculated the carbs correctly, but on that day, at that moment in time, that insulin is not enough. And you might have to have a look where your blood sugar is and take an extra nudge or an extra correction to get you back on target. And again, if that's happening between 25 to 30% of the time, I think you're doing fantastic. So just take that uh, a little bit further, if you like, it's how you use the blood sugars at different times. So if you look in the post-meal, a key time is the one hour post-meal glucose. That's generally the time when your blood glucose is the highest after a meal. So an hour after you're likely to be rising and how far it rises generally depends on how soon before, how early before your meal you're able to take your insulin. If you take your rapid acting insulin um, just before or just after a meal, the average rise of glucose is between 8 to 10 millimoles per litre. That's 8 to 10 higher than where you started. So here, if you started with a blood sugar of 6, an hour later, this person's blood glucose is now 16.5. Now, if you see that high reading and need to correct down, you've got to remember that the insulin will only start really working a half an hour later, and you might be at risk of hypoglycemia later on. If you take your insulin 15 to 20 minutes before your meal, the average rise is about three to five millimoles. So it makes a huge amount of difference. And so you can see here, blood glucose was in range pre-meal, the patient had a meal, and now an hour and a bit later, blood glucose flattened at 11, so it's only risen by about four or five. Now, of course, it isn't always possible to inject 15 minutes early, but it's important to do so whenever possible. Every time you do it, you're buying yourself some A1C for free. Now, if you look at where you are at two hours after a meal, generally your blood sugar should be falling. If you took your, the right amount of insulin, two hours later, you should be coming back down into range. If you're still rising, you might have underestimated the dose at that time. Um, if your blood sugar is below low, below six already at two hours, you're going to be at risk of hypoglycemia and you might want to take some preventive carbs. For example, in this uh, example here, the person is, was in target pre-meal, 
had injected early, you see went up by two or three, and is two hours later is coming down, is showing 5.6 with the down arrow. Now the insulin they took is still got an hour and a half to run. So this so and if you look at that oblique arrow, as we saw before in that table, you're going to drop by between two and three millimoles per liter. So at the end of that, you might be at hypo. Uh, common causes for this could be that you overestimated the carbs that you were going to eat, or maybe you did more activity than you thought, or you've had previous hypos in the day. In this scenario, you might want to take, again, a small amount of carbs just to uh, prevent the fall. Um, we would recommend if you're below six and just have the oblique arrow, maybe four to five grams, so one jelly baby or one dexose tablet is probably enough. If you've got the straight down arrow and you're already below six, Again, remember, if you're falling straight down, your real blood glucose could be up to 1 or 1.5 millimoles lower. That's a scenario where we think you might want to take a little bit more, maybe 8 to 10 grams, a couple of jelly babies or two dextrose tablets. Again, before you take action, do you think how much insulin on board do you have? Um, have you done any recent activity? If you've got a high dose of insulin on board or you've done a lot of exercise, you might need to take more carbohydrate to prevent that hypo. And this is just an example of what happens if you don't do that, in a sense. You can see here the blood sugar um, uh, was, was uh, a little bit high. The patient had a meal and a correction dose. You can see the blood glucose went up and then came really fast down. You can see that little dot which shows the patient scanned, but maybe didn't take any action at that point. When they scanned, the glucose was about 6. And you can see that it dropped down about 10 minutes later. It was hypo at which point, of course, that person was feeling symptomatic and took maybe a little bit more carbs or hyper treatment than they, want, than they should have at that time, and the glucose went back up again. And that can sometimes lead to this roller coaster effect. Something we often say to patients in clinic is, if you're falling down and you're dropping below six, a dab of the brakes, maybe five to just five grams of carb, might be enough to prevent hyperglycemia. If you don't do it then and leave it lower, then when you're down at three and you're feeling hypoglycemic, often then you're going a U-turn and you're going to bounce back a bit too high and, and kind of get on that roller coaster. So we've talked about the one hour and the two hour glucose, now moving on to three hour glucose. You can see here the person has had lunch at one o'clock um, and in this uh, example they took 70 grams of carb and took eight units of insulin, which is their meal and their correction. And now about three hours later the sugar is 15 and flat. Now of course they're not planning to eat till about seven o'clock when they get home, and it's three hours since their last insulin bolus. So some of that insulin is still working at this point. And you need to think about that when you're working out if you want to correct that 15 or not. If you are in that scenario and you think, I'm 15 and I want to do something about it, we think there's two things that you, should, you might think of. The first is to use a bolus advisor app that understands how much insulin on board there is and helps you make that, does that calculation for you. If you don't want to use that or don't have one, a simple rule of thumb that gives you a safe dose is do half the correction. So if normally um, the correction dose from 15 uh, down to 6 would be, you know, one drop by 9, so your correction dose would be 3, in this scenario you might only take one and a half units. So just be cautious if you're correcting post-meal. Two of the apps that we uh, routinely use that allow you to put in uh, all your settings and, and use the Libre data um, and have the insulin on board uh, information on them are the My Life app uh, and the My Sugar app. Um, and so have a look at those and see if uh, discuss that with your healthcare team, um, and you might find those useful. The way these would work, and um, this is the My Life app. You can see here the example is a uh, blood glucose is 14.7, so the correction dose uh, for that individual was 2.8. They're having 56 grams of carbohydrate, so their meal bolus is 7.1. If you've had some insulin on board, as in the previous example, then you'd show something in that insulin on board category. Um, and if there's a unit of insulin on board, then the suggested bolus would not be 9.9, .9, it would reduce to 8.8. .8, and that helps you avoid stacking. So just to recap, I think the blood sugar um, at different times gives you different information, and I call this the one, two, three rule. So the one hour glucose tells you, did you take the insulin early enough? If you're high at this point, Really think twice before you do something because the glucose is likely to turn around and, and start coming down anyway. So the two hour glucose tells you if you took enough insulin. And if you're high at two hours and you're not coming down, then that means you might want to think about doing a correction at some point. Even at that point though, you might be dropping and you might want to wait what's happening. If you're already low at two hours, 
um, that could lead to hypoglycemia, and so that's a good time where you might want to take that preventative uh, dose of carbs. There's not much corrective action you're going to do before the two hours, and so often I'd say there's not much to be gained by watching the glucose rise and fall, as that can, can be quite worrying. Uh, but between two and three hours is a good time to have a look because that's when you're going to make a decision where either you're going to correct because you're a bit too high or you're going to take some preventative carbs because you're dropping too fast. Now, of course, you also get the arrows pre-meal. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what rules or, rules that, or ideas they are of how you can use that information to fine-tune your bolus dose with an effort to keep your blood sugars between that 4 to 10 margin more often than before. As a rule, if pre-meal your blood glucose is going up, you're going to want to add some insulin to the bolus to account for that direction rate of change and to account for the fact that you're going to be, by the time the insulin gets going, you're going to be a bit higher. If your blood glucose is dropping, you might want to subtract some insulin, again, to account for that rate of change um, in the insulin. In the literature, um, we found that there's about three different ways that people have tried um, or suggested for you to use that. The first is what we call the ISF, or the correction rule. And here, based on what your total daily insulin is or your correction factor is, you would add or subtract a fixed amount of insulin from the calculated dose based on what the arrows are saying. The second rule that some people use is what we call the predicted glucose rule. So if you've got an arrow, you can predict where your blood sugar is going to be in about half an hour when that insulin is going to get going. And so instead of using your current glucose to calculate your dose, use the sugar where you're going to be in 30 minutes to calculate the dose. And the third rule is a 10-20% rule, which means that you either increase or decrease the amount you've calculated by 10 or 20%, depending on the arrows. So I'm just going to um, go through some examples there, and you can see if you think this is something that you might want to try. So the first rule um, is the ISF, or the insulin sensitivity factor rule. And so this table just tells you what you might do if your ISF is between 2.5 to 4 millimoles per litre. And that should cover, cover most people. So again, if, you're, if you've got an arrow going straight up, just pre-meal when you're taking your insulin, you do your normal calculation based on the amount of carbs you're going to eat and what your current blood sugar is, and just add one unit to whatever's calculated and take that. If you've got an oblique arrow, instead of adding one unit, you just add half a unit. If you're flat, Again, you don't need to make an adjustment for the arrow, and just take the dose you'd calculated based on your food and your current glucose. Similarly, if your blood sugar is coming down with an oblique arrow, and let's say you'd calculated a dose of six units, just take half off it and take four, five and a half. Um, and if you're coming down by a, a straight arrow down, then you'd subtract one unit from your calculated dose. For those patients who are a little bit more insulin resistant, um, so they've got an insulin sensitivity factor of two or below, or a total daily dose, that's when you add up your background and all the quick acting that you take. If that's more than 60, then you might double those doses. So for a straight up arrow, you'd be adding two units, um, and for an oblique arrow, you'd add one unit um, if you're going up. And for those people who are on very little insulin, they're quite insulin sensitive, if your insulin sensitivity factor is greater than 5, or your total daily dose is less than 25 units, then you'd halve that. So you'd take a quarter of a unit if for an oblique arrow, and a half unit more if you're going up with a straight arrow, and a quarter unit off, or one unit, a half unit off if you're falling down. Of course, you can't do that with pens, um, and you might just use that information to round up or down the dose you're going to take. So this is just a worked example. Um, so this is a, someone whose blood glucose is 9.2 pre-meal, and it's going up with an oblique arrow. Their usual insulin carb ratio is one unit for 10 grams, and their sensitivity is one to reduce to by three. If they're having a 40 gram lunch, then you've got four for the food and one for the correction. That's to take you from nine down to um, six. So the total calculated dose is five units. Now, because you've got an oblique arrow up, you'd add half a unit to that and take five and a half. The second method is the predicted glucose method. Um, so here, if you've got an arrow that goes straight up, we know that um, in the next 30 minutes, you're going to go by, up by at least 3.5, um, and the average is between 4 and 5. 
So you just add that, you know, you just calculate your dose based on a number that's five millimoles, four or five millimoles higher. If you've got an oblique arrow, you're going to go up by between 1.6 and 3.5. So you take the average and you adjust up by two and a half. If you're flat, you're going to change um, by less than two over the next half hour. So you can just use the, the blood sugar you've got at that moment. Similarly, if your blood sugar is coming down uh, with an oblique arrow, just adjust down by two and a half millimoles. If you're going straight down, adjust down by four millimoles. So again here, um, similar sort of scenario, blood glucose is 9.2 but going straight up. Um, so lunch is 40 grams, so in 30 minutes we would expect the glucose to rise by at least an average of four. So instead of using 9.2 for our calculation, we'll use 13.2 for calculation. And so the calculated dose would be four for the food and not uh, and 2.4 for the correction, which would take it a 6.4 units. Again, if you're using a pen, you'd round that out to six and a half units or, or seven units if you've got a, not got a half unit pen. The third rule is the 10 to 20% rule. Uh, and here, if you've got a straight arrow up, you do your normal calculation and add 20%. If you've got an oblique arrow, you just add 10% to what you've calculated. If you've got an oblique arrow down, subtract 20%, and if it's going straight down, subtract 20%. Now, of course, we've got to remember that a lot of these rules were created and used for people using pumps, which is why they're going into um, decimal points. Um, if you're using a pen, um, if you have a half unit pen, you can round to half units. If you've got a single unit pen, you'd round it to the nearest number that you've got. So again, that same example, your blood sugar is 9.2 and it's going straight up. So 40 grams of carb, so four units for the food, your sugar is nine, so that's a one unit correction. So your calculated dose is five. If you've got a straight up arrow, you're gonna add 20%. So 20% of five is one. So you'd add one more to that. So your total dose would be six units. Um, now, what, which method to use? There's three different methods and, and we don't particularly wanna confuse people, but do want to give people the option to choose the one that works best for them. So again, if you think of this scenario where the blood sugar is 13.7 and rising rapidly, if you'd use the 10-20% rule, you'd, um, you'd end up with 7.9 units. If you'd use the ISF rule, where you're just adding a unit to the calculated dose, so the calculated dose was 6.6 .6 here um, for the meal and the correction. So you're adding one unit to that, so you're getting 7.6 .6 instead of 7.9. And the third option is a predicted glucose. So it's going straight up, the glucose is 13.7, so you're gonna add four to that and do the calculation based on 17.7, .7, and that would give you 7.9 units as well. So um, if you've got a bigger meal, and this is that same sort of glucose, but for a, a 80 gram carb meal, you can see that on the 10, 20% rule, you get a bigger rise because it's a bigger meal, so it's 12.7 units. Uh, the, the ISF and the predicted glucose method give you, again, very similar numbers, 11.6, uh, 11.9. .6, Once you've rounded them out, there's, as you can see, there's not a lot of difference between them. So although they give slightly different results, it's not an exact science. On the whole, if you're rising, you want to take a bit more. If you're dropping, take a bit less. And for simplicity, I think we would advise just using the ISF one, where you're just adding a half or one unit to what you're eating if you're going up or taking that off if you're coming down and keep things simple. So just to run that, uh, an example here of someone, this is someone who, as you can see, blood sugar was pretty stable through the night, was just um, around about 10 pre-meal, and they'd had their meal, and the blood sugar is now 18.1, and it stopped rising. So what should we do? Well, as we said, this is the one hour glucose. So at this point, the insulin you're taking for the meal hasn't quite kicked in. Because it's risen by about eight, we can suggest that maybe the gap between insulin and meal wasn't big enough, and we would expect the glucose to fall. So if we wait and see, and now just move, see what happened two hours later, you can see two hours later, four hours later, in fact, the blood glucose is now back in range. So not correcting at 18, the glucose has come back down into range. If the person had corrected at that point, they would have probably um, been hyper at this point and had to treat that, and then that might have caused the blood sugar to go back up again. So in summary, I think the best times to scan are, of course, pre-meal, because that's going to help you calculate your dose. And if you want to, you might consider adding a little bit if you're rising or taking some off if you're coming down. The next 
there's not much you can do for the next two hours that's going to change that trace. So the next good time to measure would be between two or three hours post meal. If at that time you're pretty high, you might want to take a correction, but you must consider the insulin on board. If at two to three hours later you're a bit low, you might want to consider taking some carbs just to soften the fall and flatten things out. If you've got a high rise in glucose that's going straight up, think about where you're going to be in 30 minutes. That's the sort of, that's, by the time you, the insulin you take now is going to work, that's where you're going to be. If your glucose is falling, people I've seen tend to feel it's more useful to think how long it's going to be for you to reach hypo level. So if you're at six, that might be how long is it going to take you to fall by one by the time you get to five. Um, and that might be 15 minutes if you've got an oblique arrow or five min or seven minutes if you've got a straight down arrow. Small doses of carbs, dabs of the break prevent hyperglycemia. And again, you can adjust the rapid acting insulin based on the arrows pre-meal. Thank you.